Uh, hello and happy weekend from the 11th Inning Stretch Podcast. Uh, this is our weekend review for April 16th. Um, first off with league news, um, Alex, I want to get your thoughts on the uh, Orioles, Twins, and Braves. Um, as of Saturday morning, um, the Twins and Braves are both 1-9, one and one and nine, I believe. Uh, they won their first games last night, Friday night. Uh, the Braves beat the Marlins and the uh, – Twins beat the Angels at uh, at home, and uh, so I want to get your thoughts on both teams. I uh, you have a Trevor Story fascination, and I sort of have a fascination about how bad these two teams are going to be. Um, I think the Braves will be historically bad. I want to get your thoughts on them. Um, basically, the only thing I can say for them is, uh, I mean, we all knew going into the season they were going to be bad, given the fact that they're in a rebuild. Um, I honestly didn't have high hopes for him. I actually have a real close buddy that's a Braves fan, and, you know, he gives me a lot of well, crap. Tom, I'm sorry. Well, and he gives me a lot of crap because, you know, if the, the Braves beat the Cardinals, but even he understands that, you know, their payroll's really low. They're in a rebuild. They're going to lose games. It's just going to happen. Um, to the extent of how much they lose, I guess we won't know until the se- – I mean, you won't know until the season's over. Um, but I actually do think that they do have some players – some winning players on their team. I'm not saying a playoff run, but I don't. I, I honestly think that they could probably go about 500 if they if they figure it out. You know, when you have Freddie Freeman, Nick Markakis, uh, uh, Eric Ibar, you know, AJ Przinsky's always been a proven winner. Um, Julio Tehran is not really an ace, but you don't. You know, look at the Red Sox; they didn't have a, 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 an ace or nothing um, for a while. They had a bunch of number twos and threes, and you know, somehow got to 500. So. I believe that they. I believe that they could probably go 500, but they got to figure it out, and they got to figure it out soon. Yeah, because I personally think they're going to lose well over 100 games. I don't think they'll be anywhere close to 500. Because um, think about it. I mean, they're one and nine. They're 10 percent of the way there right now. I mean, that's pretty quick for two weeks into the regular season, and then they're 10 percent the way to uh, to 100 losses. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, over under 100 and We'll go 103 losses for the Braves. I'm like I said. I'm going to go under. Um, I don't think that they will lose. A, I don't think they'll lose um, 100. I think they'll. I, th- I believe, given the fact that they're proven major league baseball players, that they will figure it out and they'll try. You know, they'll do their. I mean, obviously, they're doing their best. They're not all tanking. You know, because Freddie Freeman is going to get his numbers. Nick Markakis is going to get his. But I think that they could. Pro- I think if they if they figure it out soon, I wouldn't be surprised if in this next week they can win, string together a couple wins. But if they can do that, I think they'll go about 500, maybe a little under 500, but I think they can make it. They've played some pretty tough teams too. I mean, they've already played the Nationals twice, and they played the Cardinals. I mean, I will say that that they're not playing the the easiest teams when you're that bad. Um, so. Yeah, like I said, I, I, I'm I pretty low on them. I think they're going to trade away Freeman at, at the deadline, and I think they're going to go over 103 losses. But that's just my opinion. I don't think it's – Well, the thing is, too, is like you said, they're, it, you know. yeah, they're, and they're playing good teams, like you said, but the part that, like, tells me, you know, that they're a really bad team is I understand you're playing good teams, but if you're – if you have a fighting chance in a division and you play a really good team, you, you lose by maybe one or two – the Cardinals scored back-to-back 12 runs off of them in back-to-back days. That's what yeah. tells me is like, okay, yeah, you're a really bad team. You're playing a good team, and you definitely showed it. Like, you're not going to be able to compete with those guys. Um, that's what shows it to me. Now, if they'd, have lost two, if they'd have lost those two games by one or two runs, then it's a different story because then I could exactly, see. Yeah, but you know, but I could they are absolutely wiped. Exactly, and I could see a fighting chance. But they got, they got you know, those last two games were they were hit pretty hard, and Randall Gritchick, who wasn't hitting at all going into that game, hit really well going into those last mm-hmm. two, and has I mean, basically ever since then he's hit better. The Braves pretty much kickstarted his offense. Uh, I know I, I agree. Um, along with the Braves, the Twins are also one and nine. They won their first game last night, and I just want to say one note on them is that I'm actually a bit surprised about them because I had them, you know pretty well contending in the central uh granted there's still 150 some odd games left um but their offense is pretty good that i would have thought hmm they wouldn't be going 0 9 they would at least win one game in there because their offense could probably get them some runs the the pitching isn't the greatest but the offense could score some runs you, you would think at least once to win them a game 
Uh, and then on the opposite end of the spectrum, you have the Orioles, who I'm not quite sure of the record, but they were seven and one, seven and one at one point. Right now, they're eight and two. Um, I think that their offense is really, really good, and their pitching is very average. I'm not sold on their pitching, um, but their hitting can definitely win them some ball games. Yeah, and I, I would even go uh, along with saying that I think that their pitching is below average, to be honest. Not by much, but I think it is. You know, they don't really – I mean, they have what they call their ace, but he's not – I mean, in any other staff, he wouldn't be a one. You know, he'd probably be a two, maybe even a three. Um, and he doesn't actually pitch that well anyway, to be honest. One thing you. I've noticed is that he starts the year pretty well. I don't know. I don't have the exact stats pulled up, but usually he starts the season the first two months or so really, really good, and, 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 and he's doing it again. Uh, so I expect, I expect him to cool off at some point. Exactly, exactly. You know, that's and that's, you know, everybody was making a fuss about Trevor's story, and, you know, that's like you said, I have that – I have kind of that – I don't know. I don't know if it's like a, uh, uh, you know, I don't think it's something. Man, I don't, you know, I don't watch just Trevor's story or nothing. But, you know, it, the the part about it to me is, you know, it's you know he, you get drafted to a team that has Troy Chilowitzki as their shortstop, and you're a shortstop. Like that almost can't get any worse for you, as a prospect because you have to wait for him to retire. And he's still, I mean, for Troy Chilowitzki, he's still pretty young and he has a lot of productive years. But the part that's really nice is he gets traded. And then that gives you your chance to shine. And Trevor Story's taking full advantage of that opportunity to shine. And that's that's the the part to me that I enjoy watching a lot. Keeping with the over under theme on Trevor Story, do you think we'll get over under twenty eight home runs? I think he'll be right around twenty eight. I'm actually going to go out under that. Um, um, just I think he'll probably get around twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, something like that. I don't think he'll hit thirty quite yet. I. Um, I don't know. I don't even know how old he is, but um, in his major league career, he's still pretty young. And I think he'll figure it out eventually to be a 30 home run guy. Um, I don't think that that time is now, unless he hits a lot of home runs at Coors Field, which is po- yeah, very possible. Of, yeah, the Coors Field effect is, is going to. He's only 23, by the way. Um, I think the Coors Field effect is going to jack up his numbers, um, but. When you have raw power, you have raw power, and that can translate to any ballpark except for maybe San Diego. Um, in Minnesota. Yeah, I, in Minnesota. I, I agree with you. I, I think he'll be right around that 25 mark. Um, but it wouldn't surprise me if he does get 28, if he gets another hot streak in Coors Field. I can totally see him going over 28. And that's the thing, too, is people are like, oh, he's cooled off now. He probably won't hit another home run. Well, you got to think. The, probably, you know, the average home runs right now is like two, you know. Two or three. He's yeah. hit, yeah. He's hit seven. Like he's that far ahead of everybody that he can actually, if he cools down now, but then goes on a hot streak later, he's liable to hit about 20, 20 runs. Absolutely, you would you would have to think so. Um, um and then power, um, go ahead. No, no, I, you can go ahead. I was gonna say that you would have to think that he's gonna get hot at hot at some point, and maybe not hit seven home runs like he did, but he'll hit a couple here and there and, and get hot and have a streak. And the Rockies have always been known to be a pretty good offensive team the past couple of years. Um, so, yeah, I could – I mean, 25, 28, 30 wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, it would probably climb. Um, and then and other news in the league, just real quick, uh, Bryce Harper hit his 100th career home run. He's like the second or third youngest person to do so in baseball history. Um, Pablo Sandoval has gone to the DL, and there was actually a story that came out about him that an ex uh, Red Sox trainer said that Pablo Sandoval apparently needs a babysitter to to regulate his uh, uh, overeating because I guess he goes yeah, away from I, his diet. I saw the story that that, that they're not going to start him unless he loses weight. So I mean, hopefully he can get it faked out. Well, the thing is, too, is I can understand that, too, because he did lose – he lost a lot of weight a couple of years ago because there was a picture mm-hmm. on social media that he, you know, he's walking around with a six-pack and all this kind of stuff. The thing is, is he's always been heavy, and he'll probably, well, probably I mean, always be heavy, to be honest. Um, when you're playing thing, third base, you, you can't be as much as he is. Yeah, as you know, right now. But I think the thing is, is – I don't think it's so much as the weight. I think it's the fact that he got that big contract and it's going to his head. So now he's like, oh, I can do whatever I want. You know, I'm getting paid. Um, And then after that, 
the Phillies Velasquez, uh, he's actually in the Ken Giles trade with the Astros, but he threw a complete game with 16 strikeouts the other day. I don't remember what day it was, but uh, kudos to him. That was really good. A lot of that has to deal with the fact that no one's really seen him in the league before. So, you know, he's coming out with a bunch of surprises. So I think once the league gets adjusted to him, he'll, I mean, even out. But that was a really good start by him. Yeah, no, agreed. I, uh, yeah, I don't know what it, I mean, yeah, exactly. Um, shifting over to fantasy news real quickly, uh, Alex, my player of the week is uh, Jeremy Hazelbaker, and I'm trying not to be a homer for the Cardinals or for my own team because I picked up Jeremy Hazelbaker. Um, but in the last week, he has uh, one home run, five RBIs, two stolen bases, five runs, and a 433 OBP. I mean, that's that's pretty doggone good. Got to play the hot hand when it comes to fantasy baseball. That's right. And he's, you know, he's still available in, what, 28% of leagues on Yahoo, um, which is more than I thought it would be. Or, sorry, not as many as I thought it would be. And, you know, it, the thing about fantasy is, is just playing the hot hand. Once, you know, once Hazel Baker cools off, then I'll drop him and then I'll play the next hot hand. And if he stays hot, well, there's, I mean, that's just more reason to keep him. Exactly. Um, my my player is a uh, uh, has been a mainstay in the middle of this lineup, but it's going to be Carlos Santana, the Indians, the first baseman. Um, it seems like anytime I watch a highlight video of a Indians game, he's always you know hitting a double, hitting a home run, doing something. Agree. He's all he's a he's basically a guy they you know he was a catcher for a long time. And he was really good at that, and then they said, okay, we don't want you there. We want you to put you at third base. Can you play third base? And he goes sure, and they put him at third base, and he played there. Then his kind of production at the plate kind of dipped off a little bit. Then they're like, okay, can we put you at first base, less wear and tear on you? And he goes, sure. And so he's basically played wherever they want him to play, and the dude still hits. So uh, that'll be my player to watch. He's actually on one of – if not if not two, he's on one of my uh, leagues for sure. I don't uh, – but uh, uh, like I said, like you said, I'm not trying to be a homer for my team, but, um, you know, it's just – you know, with him being on my team, I know his stats and stuff. So exactly, it, it helps me out a little bit picking those. But um, you know, we 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 try to pick you guys some players to, to look out for. Um, um, obviously, your players more you can pick up on free agency. Mine's kind of you almost kind of have to draft him. I don't think Carlos Santana. If you don't, if your league doesn't draft Carlos Santana, then you're playing with a league with a bunch of scrubs. Yeah, no, I, you would have to think he's he's available in every single league. I would. I would think so. I don't know why he wouldn't be. Yeah, I, he he's got to be picked up. He's got to be drafted by somebody. Like, there's no way. I uh, on Yahoo, he's available. Oh wow, he's only available in. He's taken in sixty six percent of leagues, so he's still available in one third. So that's that's more than uh, likely. You know, it's very likely that your league still has him available. Yeah, yeah, I would definitely go check that out. If you're playing with less than ten people, I would definitely go check him out. But, yeah. Um, I want to shift to Cardinals news now. Um, I don't want to touch on the Brave series for too long because it's kind of old news. Um, But the Cardinals offense came out strong in the Brave series. They pummeled their pitching. Um, It was was the exact opposite of what we saw in Pittsburgh. Um, Hazel Baker and Diaz. Diaz, How do you say his name? Is it Diaz or Diaz? It's Ledmus Diaz. Diaz, okay. Because um, because I've heard both and I've been unsure. So Diaz um, and Hazel Baker were your two main contributors there. Uh, Carlos Martinez had an outstanding pitching performance, and that was really kind of the only solid performance of the whole series. Carlos Martinez. Yeah, I mean, you really can't, you know, uh, like I heard on the radio the other day that, that you know it's completely true. Is you beat up on the bad teams and you play about five hundred against the good ones. And that's what the Cardinals did. They, you know, they beat up on a bad team. That's what happened. So, I mean, um, I'm not, you know, it's it, – don't read too much into it. You know, I know the Cardinals, even in this series against the Reds, are still raking. Um, they, they hit six, six home runs last night. Yeah, six home runs is very impressive. And, I mean, Matt Holiday – and that's the thing, too, is I want to, uh, you know, basically to wrap up that, I want to move in because, like you said, Brave Series is pretty much, you know – you know, it's we don't want to read too much into it. But in the Red Series, uh, I think Matt Holiday is actually trying to find his stroke a little bit. And I've been very impressed with uh, Yadier Molina, too, with his hitting. 
Well, the Reds are the good te- are a good team to do it against the Reds and the Brewers because the Cubs are coming to town on Monday. So, you know, get your offense figured out now because you're, you're probably going to need it against the Cubs. Exactly, exactly. And, and then that was the thing a lot of people had was with the hand that Molina had worked on because it was his uh, bottom hand on the bat. You know, that's a lot of your power right there. You know, you, you a lot of people finish with that hand. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, just to see him being able to drive the ball. And it seems like he's consistently hitting it towards the fence. You know, it always seems like he's hitting a double or at least he's hitting it out there. Um, and that's what I like to see. That's when, you know, that's the type of thing I can see in the next couple of months that Molina might go on one of those years where he hits about 20 home runs if, you know, if he's – and the thing is, too, is he's I, down in the I lineup. Think- that's the thing is he get, he's not getting, you know, he's not on those high pressure at bats. He's basically hitting the way he wants to hit. You know, the, the hand is an issue, but also I'm just not sure he can hit 20 home runs given his age. Uh, I don't think he's in the, in the point in his career where he's just got to go ahead and rake. For him, I just want him to get on base and, and I want him to catch, you know. I don't care if he goes over the season. I just need him to to catch um but i mean and everything after that is just gravy but it, yeah i if he can hit 10 or 12 home runs that's i that's pretty doggone good and I, and I will take that well and the thing you gotta think of is i think it was like in 2012 yeah 2012 uh when we got carlos beltran you know carlos beltran matt holiday and yonder molina all hit 20 home runs you know, right. granted, that's a good point. That was roughly four years ago, but Molina was still pretty old in and in, in that season too. You know, that's what I'm saying is his offense is coming more alive in his later career. I'm not saying that it's a lock for 20 home runs. Just the way that he's been driving the ball, he's gotten. Let's just say he's gotten really close to knocking a couple of these over the fence. So, oh, right. yeah, yeah. You know, I'm. I, I definitely wouldn't say he's going to hit over 20. I would say if he hit 20 home runs. You're probably and can catch away soon. You're looking at a really good probable MVP pick. Interesting, you say that. You know, that's a. If we all know his defense is going to be good, so that that's not the issue. But yeah, it's the offense. You know, it, it, if he were to somehow hit 20 home runs, I don't think he will. Um, then, yeah, I think he'd be an MVP pick because that's Buster Posey, ish. Yeah, exactly. I don't. I. I'm not saying he's going to win it. I'm just saying that, you know, if you, you got a, I don't know, he's like 35, 34, something like that. But you hit 20 home runs, you drive in, you know, 70, 80, and you can keep runners from stealing bases, and you're basically the leader, complete staff, and the team. You know, that's an MVP candidate at least. You know, that's a good point is where his, what's the highest he's been in MVP voting? Do you have any I, idea? I think he finished – Second to Andrew McCutcheon one year, I believe. If um, I remember right, he's always in the. He's usually if he has a good season, he's in the top ten usually. I'm gonna let's see. I'm seeing 2013. He finished third. Yeah, it was McCutcheon, uh, yeah. McCutcheon, Goldschmidt, Molina, and then Carpenter yeah, yeah. actually. Matt Carpenter actually finished fourth. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what it was. That's the yeah, that was the, the that was the year the Cardinals had two uh, two MVP or you know players in the MVP voting in the top five. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think and that was also Maloney, the year. He had, was that he the had year? Two. Go ahead. Sorry. No, 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 I'm just trying to remember if that was the year that Carpenter played second base for us. I think it might have been. Yeah. I think it um, Molina was. had two. He had two first place votes, eight second place votes, four third place votes, uh, six fourth and six fifth. So yeah, I mean, I mean, and Andrew McCutcheon had twenty eight, one and one for second well, third. The, the, the thing that votes. I would say say about that voting is I don't care what some people say. You know, oh, I never did this for the votes or to get into the Hall of Fame. It's like no, you did it exactly for the votes in the Hall of Fame. Like that's, no, what that's you're, yeah, that's, you're exact, that's ex- what that's. That is their ultimate goal. Your ultimate goal is to win World Series and get to the Hall of Fame. You don't play baseball just because you're like, hey, you know what, I want to go hit and field some ground balls. No, it's I want to oh, be yeah, you the, win the, best World Series, the, best. the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Exactly, and being Cooperstown. I don't care what anybody says, but Molina, I can honestly say the 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 um 
the reward he's looking for the most is the Rawlings gold and platinum glove. That's what that's what Yachty's yeah, always trying for. And I think he, we've seen that in his play because if he really wanted a silver slugger or something like that, he would be you know his offensive his offensive numbers would be more pronounced and he'd be working on that more. But his defense just seems to be getting better and better, or at the very least staying the same, which is very very good. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, and he just you know. He has to have a separate closet for all those awards. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then uh, speaking of, like I said, he's the, the, the uh, basically the manager of that staff. Um, just to go into it real quick, Jaime Garcia pitched a one-hitter the other day, um, and that also helps when you can bounce his curveball in the dirt, and Molina's going to block it 110% of the time. Yeah. Um, uh, what is your thoughts on – and Jaime Garcia and moving forward with him as a fifth starter or fourth starter, for fourth before, starter. If, before I say this, I, I do want to note before I forget that Marco Gonzalez is out for the season um, with Tommy John surgery. So the Cardinals, their sixth starter could be up in the air. We can discuss that in a moment. But um, for Garcia, I think when he's when he's healthy, um, back on wood. Uh, he's one of the more underrated pitchers in, in the National League. Um, I wonder how many people, fans, could like knew who Jaime Garcia was before his one hitter. Because I mean, yes, he's been around a while. People probably know his name, but um, they don't realize how how good he is when he is healthy. Uh, granted, the health is a major issue because he he's about as fragile as glass at some at some points. Um, but if He's he can stay healthy, issues. if he can stay healthy, gosh, it, 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 that's such a nice piece in well, the rotation. And the main thing is the reason he's so nasty is the the way he pitches. He's not your typical stand up straight, you know, lift the leg and throw. He's got like it's almost like a lunge forward. He cups his hand when he throws every pitch, so that gives a little, little more uh, uh, curve, a little more bite on his curveball. He's an awesome. I, I'll tell you this: If he's healthy, he is probably. And obviously, you know, Clayton Kershaw's out. You know, I'm talking about the other left-handers in the league. But I would, if he, as him being healthy, he would probably be my pick for left-handed starter. You know, not number one starter on my pitching rotation, just because he is that nasty. I agree. That's fair. Uh, Clayton Kershaw is my number one. I'm not going to th- – there's no point in talking about that because he's just that good. Um, exactly, exactly. He would be mine too. If they're like, oh, you know, Clayton Kershaw. You know, I, I mean, yeah, I I can't think of anybody else, honestly. There's nobody. I don't – you know, I can't – There's. I mean, maybe Francisco Liriano, but he's he's hot and cold. If Usually if Jaime's right, you know, if he's healthy, he's usually <laughs> – yeah. I mean, let, look at last season. Like – yeah, he was good all season. Yeah, th- yeah. The thing with Jaime is that like he, like L- Liriano has stayed healthy, but he has good spurts and he has bad spurts, like most pitchers do. Jaime, he doesn't really have really bad, bad spurts. Bad. Well, his bad spurts are is when Garcia is injured, um, mm-hmm. and he cannot pitch. When he can pitch, he's pretty good. He usually, he he usually is on a good spurt. Yeah, he, he's usually if he's healthy, he's usually right on. He he's got his mechanics down to a T. Um, Sticking with the rotation, um, I just said that you know Marco Gonzalez is out for the season. Who do the Cardinals have as a sixth starter? Because you have to think at some point somebody in this rotation is going to get hurt. Because that's you, just what happens. I don't think that you. Okay, here's what I would say about that. You know, I don't. You know, a lot of people say you have to expect someone's going to get hurt. That's the thing is I don't think you have to expect someone to get hurt. You have more more you have to prepare for someone to be hurt. I don't think you should sit around and wait and go, oh, you know, who's gonna, you know, you know, tear an ACL. You know, yes, it ha- it's basically happened to us probably every year for the past couple of years. But I don't. I, I that's the thing is you know I hate when people go, oh, you know, their Cardinals are doing good now until someone gets hurt. You know, why are you waiting for that? You prepare for it by all means, yes. But I don't think okay, you're yeah, sure waiting for it. Prepare, yeah, so that, that, that that's a fair statement. So the expectation is that you will perform and that you will pitch. Uh, you also have to have those contingency plans in place. 
Yeah, I just I don't really know. Um, I I'd say for the the sixth starter though, I wouldn't use anybody. Tyler Lyons only pitches into the fifth inning usually. Um, I would honestly go. Uh, I would pick up Tim Lincecum to be honest with you. I'd let him start for you until the other person comes back healthy, and then throw him in the bullpen because he proved himself a couple years ago that's that he can really, pitch in the bullpen. That's a that's a really good idea, I think, and I'm actually a bit surprised no one's picked him up. But you would have to think that as pitchers start to go down in the season, he's going to get a look. Um, exactly. That's a good point because I don't think the Cardinals really have a, a great starter out there. Tyler Lyons is – he's been – he's had his moments and he's pretty decent. But I, I like him in the bullpen. Um, and I, I haven't done my research on the minor leagues, but I don't know if the Cardinals have anybody in the minor leagues right now that can come up for a couple weeks and pitch. No, and that's the thing, too, is, you know, if they're for a while, the Cardinals, you know, they're for, when we, I don't know, 2011, you know, whenever we were bringing up all these rookies that were that were uh, pitching for us, basically, you know, our farm system was cluttered with pitching, 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 pitching. Well, now the old guys we've kind of pushed out and we brought in the young guys, so now our pitching in the minor leagues is, is low. But that's what happens when you, you know, when you rebuild your farm system, you're going to use those guys eventually. Right, yep. And the, so now and that's the, what the Cubs have done too, because their farm system right now it's probably pretty barren because everybody that they had is now up in the major leagues and good for them. Exactly, exactly. So don't I don't wouldn't read too much into the Cardinals minor leagues at all. They're going to replenish them. They always have. They always will. But yeah, basically, they have what's three draft on. picks in this in this next draft. They have their pick, then they have the two compensatory picks um, from the Cubs for Hayward and Lackey. So the, yeah, the, they're going to replenish it. Exactly, and the thing is, is uh, I wouldn't. And, and here's what I'm saying: I would. I don't say that they're gonna pick up Tim Lincecum if someone gets hurt. I'm, I'm saying they're gonna pick up someone like Tim Lincecum, somebody who's proven themselves in the bullpen before, but who's started before in their career. That way, whenever the person gets back, hey, yeah, you know, you you're gonna need, have. You just need a placeholder. You, you don't need somebody who, who who's gonna pitch 200 innings. You just need somebody who, who can pitch for two or three weeks. Exactly, unless it's a serious injury. If it's a serious injury, here's what I'm saying. Okay, um, I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, but okay, let's say one of the pitchers goes down for the Cardinals and it's an elbow issue. Okay, do not take that lightly. Do not wait from a second opinion. You know, go out and get somebody immediately. That's what that's what I'm trying to say is depending, you know, if, you know, if they have turf toe or whatever, you know, that's the dumbest fucking injury I think ever in the history of sports, but – um, you know, if if that's a if it's an elbow problem, you need to pick somebody up immediately. Even if they're going to be okay in a couple days, you pick somebody up immediately with an elbow because they can be out the rest of the year and then part of next part of the next. Um, so depending on the injury, it would depend on you know what they're going to go with. I honestly think if if you know if it's just oh they're going to miss a start, they're going to go with Tyler Lyons probably for that start. And that makes um, sense. Yeah. He can go a start or two. Yeah, exactly. But if they're gonna, you know, if they're gonna be on the 50, 15 day DL, um, thirty day DL even. Yeah, you know, something like that. Or if it's an elbow issue, or if it's you know, if it's Jaime with a groin issue, you pick somebody up immediately. Um, you know, that's a, and it really depends on the pitcher. You know, if, if Wainwright goes down and he's got an ankle problem, you pick somebody up immediately. If it's, excuse me, if it's Waka with a arm injury, you pick him up immediate, immediately. I don't know if Leaks had any injuries in the past. Um, you know, I you think know. he's been relatively healthy. I mean, obviously, I'm sure he's had some health issues here and there like everybody else does, but I think for the most part he's been relatively healthy. Exactly. So it depends on the pitcher and the injury, but I think eventually if someone gets injured, I think they'll pick somebody up like Tim Lincecum. Um, but speaking on the uh, minor leagues, uh, I, I was listening to ESPN Radio the other day, and I think it was the Kevin Wheeler show, to be honest with you. Great show. If you guys haven't listened to it, give it a listen. Um, he's funny. Um, but they were talking about Ruben Tejada. And I haven't given this much thought because it never hit me. But Ruben Tejada goes down, which allows basically Hazel Baker to come up. So who do you who do you think would be sent down when Tejada comes up? Because Hazel Baker's performing at a pretty high and level right now. Let's not limit this to, to Tejada. Let's also talk about Tommy Pham in a sense. Um, exactly. He'll be back within the next couple weeks, you would think. Um, yeah. You know what? That's a good question. Uh, I'm not sure. 
because it's not going to be Hazel Baker with the way he's performing. Uh, it's not going to be our shortstop because of the way he's performing. I It's not going to be him, but my personal preference would be Matt Adams because yeah, that, that's who it's I not going to happen. It's not going to happen, and I understand that because – I just, I just don't think they want him in the minor leagues, but I'm sorry. Hazel Baker and uh, Diaz are performing way better than Matt Adams is, so I'll take Matt Adams because I've never been a big fan of him from the start. Uh, so, yeah, that's well, – and, and it's not going to be a pitcher. Yeah, exactly, and I would say – Or what about possibly Greg Garcia? I – I no, I wouldn't send Greg Garcia down. He's your right now. Greg Garcia is your guy that could probably play wherever you need him to on the infield. I would keep him up. Um, I would. I would probably, if I were you, if at all possible, just to get him some work. Um, because, like you said, Matt Adams. Yeah, he's you know he hasn't performed really in the past couple seasons. Uh, the big thing for him, I think, would be um, not because you lose faith in Matt Adams, because I still believe he could probably be a thirty home run guy. Um, just the way that his swing is, um, I would say you send him down and you tell him he's going to come back up um, in September probably unless someone gets hurt. But I would send him down there and tell him to get his work in. You need him to start every day. You need him to see pitching. I I just don't think he's done anything to prove he should be on a major league roster. At least least this season for sure. Okay, okay. Think about this just real quick, Just, just super quick. I don't remember who it was. But I believe he was on the Diamondbacks, I believe. Don't get me wrong. But there was a player who came up, and he's hit three home runs already. He, in the last two seasons in the minor leagues, has hit three home runs. Now, in my mind, that doesn't give him any right to start on a major league roster. But someone gave him a chance. Now, here's what I'm saying about Matt Adams. Now, hear me out, hear me out. Yes, he hasn't performed at all. And yes – but his sample size has been fairly large. He's been around for a couple of years. Yes, that is very true. But here's the thing. Is he still young? Okay. Brandon Moss isn't getting any younger. Brandon no, Moss is, getting, is, is going to get up in age. You've already taken Steven Piscotty basically out of the first base spot and said that he's going to, he's going, uh, to play the outfielder. And, yeah, exactly, and not play first base. So he's gone. I don't trust Brandon Moss. If Okay, if we make it to the postseason and can make it to the World Series, I don't trust Brandon Moss to be my DH. I don't nope. – I definitely do not trust him to be my defensive first baseman. Matt Adams, his offense has been low, but his defense has always been really good. Yeah, his, his defense has been average or slightly above average. Yeah, so here's – and this is why I'm saying hear me out. You're going to get into these schemes where you're going to allow the DH – Okay, I'm going to go ahead and guess that Matt Holliday is probably going to be your DH for most of those games, unless Molina needs a day off. Okay, so then you need a good defensive first baseman. Like I said, I don't trust Moss. The Scotty's baseman is taken out of that role. Holliday, so, who knows who, who knows where he's at in first base defensively right now. Well, he and that's the thing. Enough of them. That's the thing too. Is if Matt Holliday would, would be your DH, it's, it's got to be him. So you need a first baseman defensively, because I uh, at this point in time the defensive first base matters to me more than the the off uh, the offense ability of first base, um, because it's going to be the same thing as Molina. We need you know defense wins championships. Offense gets you through the regular season, but defense wins championships. So defensively, I think Matt Adams deserves his chance on the the, the MLB roster because he has good defense. But here's the thing also that I, I was thinking about. If they bring the DH to the National League, okay, you got to go. Which is entirely possible. It, yeah, exactly. It's very, very possible. Not here in the next couple of years, but I'd say down the road, five, six years is probably is probably going to happen. You got a guy who could potentially be another David Ortiz and play until hit until he's forty. Basically, not even play, just hit until he's forty. And Matt yeah, Adams, all you got to do is t- is go to the plate four times a game. Exactly, and that could be that could be your DH is Matt Adams. That's what I'm saying is if he can go down to the minor leagues, if he can get his at bats, if he can see pitches, if you know, tell him not to swing at the first one. Don't tell him not to swing for the fence every time. You know, tell him to look at pitches, see pitches. Tell him to watch, beat the shift. Exactly. Watch curveballs. Watch sliders. If he, can, 
if he can pop the ball the other way, he'd be a pretty good offensive threat. Exactly. But, but that shift, but, but the teams don't put anybody on the left side of the infield because they know he's not going to hit it there. If he can put up a bunt down the uh, down the third base line or on the left side of the infield, you're on base. Exactly. That's and that's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. I don't think that he deserves a chance on the MLB roster for a whole year to start or just to sit around. I think you have to earn that spot. Um, but definitely in September, I would bring him back. But I, I would say when Tejada and Fan come back, I would probably even go along and say that uh, just to get him at bats, then you'd probably call the one back up. But I would say uh, Matt Adams and uh, Jed Jerko would probably be the ones that would go down for me. Jer- Jer- either Jed, he's an either- interesting taste. I, I I don't know. I mean, I think either Jed Jerko or Greg good. Garcia. And that's what I was saying. Either uh, Greg Garcia or Jed Jerko would have to go down. And and the thing is too is they're probably going to find two scrubs that are on the team that haven't played at all. They're they're going to send down, yep. and we have no idea who they are. Yeah, I, we, I'll say yeah. this: the city of St. Louis is going to be very upset with the Cardinal team if they send Jeremy Hazelbaker back down. As they should be. If the way he's performing, there is no reason he has earned a spot in my in my outfield. For right until now, t- yes. Yeah, until Tommy Van can come back and prove that he's healthy and can pl- and can perform at the high level that he was, Jeremy Hazelberger has by all means proved that he can play. And if they're going to start Tommy Pham, he's at least earned a spot on the roster for the whole season to be your fourth outfielder. Oh, I, I agree. And the, out, the outfield, there is a big surplus right now. It's just a matter of what are you going to do with them. Someone's got Someone's either going to be benched and not very happy or sent down and not very happy. Exactly. Um, to wrap it up, I, I had talked about this last week. Um, right before the season started, I got into a pretty decently sized feud with Cubs fans I, on Twitter. I just... Um, so what happened was, this was right before the season started. This is on April 2nd. And do you know who Carl, uh, Carl, Carl Ravitch is on ESPN? Yeah. Yeah, he tweeted out. Did anyone other than Cubs fans notice the team won 97 games last year? Then added Jason Hayward, John Lackey, and Zobrist. There are less flaws than others. And I go, did and and then I I, I replied to him. Uh, did anybody, including analysts, realize that you can't win the World Series in April? Why does the MLB even bother playing games? Because uh, that was my, you know, if. If the Cubs are going to be a World Series champs, why are we even playing this season? Because everyone's picking the Cubs. So I got I I heard it from Cubs fans. Um, I'm not going to mention their names because I don't want to antagonize these people and, and I don't want to uh, promote them and I uh, th- they're not worth it to me. So one of them replied. Um, they're called predictions, and analysts make them every season. It's not a new concept. And, I, and, and I'm not going to read through every single tweet, um, but basically what I said was that, you know, the Cubs are good. Uh, they're going to be very good for a number of years, but you can't win the World Series in April. Go ask the Washington Nationals the past two years. People have picked them, and the Nationals didn't even get to the playoffs. They, were, they, they, they scrubbed out pretty quickly. So we continued this conversation for a while, yada, yada, yada. Um, and they just called me out and called me, you know, homers and all that whole thing. And then there's this one account that I really enjoy looking at. What he does is he, uh, every time the Cubs win or lose a game, he, he changes his account name um, to the record and how many games they are over the second place team. So like, for example, right now, um, I'm waiting to pull it up here. Right now, like his his Twitter name is eight and two, two up. So yeah, the, so the record is eight and two, and they're two up on the Cardinals right now. And basically, what he does is is that he just trolls Cardinals fans. Uh, you know, he thinks uh, Gritchick sucks, Molina sucks, everybody sucks to this guy. Uh, and what I find interesting is that he he hates the Cardinals more than he loves the Cubs. 
And uh, so, yeah, we got into it. And if you're really interested in seeing it, just go to my Twitter account and just scroll through the tweets and you'll see my replies and then you can look at it. Um, the, but the, go ahead. I just, the, 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 so, I, okay, at my job, we've had people come in. And as everybody knows, obviously starting this, I'm a huge Cardinal fan, diehard huge Cardinal fan. We've had people come in and they look at Cubs stuff and I kind of do, oh, please tell me you're not a Cubs fan. You know, kind of give them that whole thing. And, but it's basically just a conversation starter. Okay, and here's, and here's what they told, you know, the, the, the guy told me. He goes, I'm a Cubs fan. I used to be a White Sox, but let's be real, no one really likes the White Sox. Yeah. So he tells me, he goes, yeah, and I've met some Cardinal fans that are kind of rude. Okay, and I can totally agree with that. I am oh, a Cardinal yeah. fan. I am a Cardinal fan through and through. And I... I've actually seen the way some Cardinal fans react, and it's pissed me off to to because we're supposed to be the greatest fans in baseball, and when you're yelling at other fans and you know you're starting fights and you're you know making other people's uh, uh, stay at Bush Stadium not a very pleasant one, then you're basically to me you're a worthless Cardinal fan. Agreed. Yep. Okay, but on that same thing is Cubs fans do the same thing, but the thing is, oh, is Cubs fans any better now? Cubs fans do are like the younger brother. They say things just to antagonize us. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the well, internet is a great conduit to do that. Exactly. You know what? Because they're going to beat you up on the internet. Okay, but I'm going to go ahead and guess that these people, when they in, in real life, because they're using the internet. That, exactly. Excuse me. They're not going to, you know, they're and they're going to show up and I'm like, oh, okay, and, but they're going to talk reason. But on the internet, they're going to say, oh, the car, the Cubs are the best. Blah, blah, blah. No such thing as. Is reason and and let me say this real quickly if you hate the other team more than you love your team you're not a fan sorry exactly it's more of a grudge thing for you okay I, I I've never have I said I hated the Cubs yes that was when I was dumb it was stupid of me to say because I don't hate any of the teams I really don't I am actually glad that the Cubs are good again it makes it seem really fun really fun exactly it makes it fun the Cardinals aren't the pick to win it, you know. You know, it gives the Cardinals something to play for. We always get shut out of the news, and that's fine. I'll keep it that way. I'm not complaining one bit, because if you look at it, the Cubs. You know, a lot of things Cubs fans will tell me now is they're like, "Oh, hey, you know, who beat you in the playoffs last year?" Okay, that's fine. But did you make it to the World Series last year? So you beat us for nothing, to be honest yeah. with you. you know, if you don't make it to the World Series then the rest of your season was nothing. I don't care that the Cardinals won 100 games. It doesn't matter to me. I will never say, oh, the Cardinals won 100 games because yeah. the thing I said right back, did they win the World Series? No, it doesn't matter. If you don't at least make it to the World Series, I don't care who beat who because that just means you were hot for those seven games. That's all yeah. that means. So yeah, the, All the playoffs is in every sport is who's the hottest. Exactly. I couldn't agree more. And that's the thing that some people don't understand is they think, oh, our team's been good all season. You know, we've been rock solid. We're just, we've, we're just rolling through it. So uh, I'm just – I'm sick and tired of you know, the, the, the bickering back and forth. It's just, just go to a game, watch your team, enjoy yeah. watching your team, and stop bitching to other people. Like, I'm sick and tired of people just yelling at other people going, oh, your team sucks. This you know <laughs> – this Your team doesn't into a suck in the major leagues. I, th 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 this, this leads into a conversation that I want to get your opinion on next week. The whole best fans in baseball mantra. Th think about it for a week and sit on it and let me know. Uh, because I have some very strong opinions on it and I don't like it. Um, but I'll get into the specifics next week. The only thing I'm going to say is every team thinks they have the best fans mm -hmm. in baseball. That's the every only team, thing I'm every gonna, sport. Exactly. That's the only thing I'm going to say to that extent because we will definitely hit on that. And the one thing I just want to hit real quick, just because I, I, I didn't uh, hit it real quick, uh, last week I teased you guys with a trade that I think is going to happen. Um, we'll probably talk about it more next week because we're running out of time. But my twin suggestion, I told you it was twins, and I think it's going to be Kenny Vargas. So I'm actually going to let you sit on that for a week because I've sat on it now and think I've thought about it a little bit. Um, but you sit on that, and I'll sit on the best fans of baseball, and we'll talk about it next week. Um, and that will okay. be our big discussion for next week. Sounds good. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll be back next weekend. Okay. Um, thank you guys for uh, tuning in. Um, it's been real fun. We've had a lot of fun, a lot of smiles, a lot of laughs so far. We're hoping to keep this thing rolling. Um, 
and also tell your friends and tell your family, you know, give us a subscribe here on YouTube. Um, we're not doing it for money. We're doing it for fun, but we want to know that people are watching our content. Um, uh, uh, hopefully me and Paul can go out to some games. I know we have one scheduled for May something to Cubs on Wednesday. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you guys see us out there, you know, say hi. You know, I'm not going to say we'll sign autographs because, you know, let's be real, no one wants our autograph. But, our, um, but yeah, our, our, our sensor is worth less than nothing. Exactly. You know, but if you're a fan and you've seen it, you know, you know, tell us hi. How's it going? Talk to us for a minute. But we're going to head out to that game. I'm going to a game on the 30th. Uh, you know, if you see me there, say hi. Uh, but other than that, guys, it's been really fun. I'm really excited to see where this is going to go. Uh, by the way, if you guys don't know, I'll say it now. I know the, the sound quality has been really crappy. You know, we've kind of been doing it off the, the stock on our computers and laptops. Um, we did get mics in. Uh, we're actually using them on this video, so tell us how those sounded to you. Um, uh, we'll put them up on the, the uh, Facebook and Twitter accounts just to show you guys. But uh, um, we're making these things for you. You know, we're trying to make it the best quality possible. Um, you know, this is all for you guys. A little bit for us. You know, we enjoy doing it. Um, it's good when you can have, do things with friends. Um, like I said, you know, we'll tune in next week. We've give, left you guys some teasers. Think about those. And like I said, you know, leave leave comments and uh, uh, questions on the pages. You know, we want to hear from you guys. And if we don't hear from you, then we don't really know what to talk about. So uh, make sure you're doing that. Make sure you get tell people to subscribe to the YouTube channel. And that'll be it for this week. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We will see you next week. And uh, look forward to the series wrap-up and series preview coming up from the Reds to the, uh, the Cubs.